Hey there, welcome to another edition of the Small Business Show. Today, we're going to take your questions, talk about them, and hopefully come up with some answers, aren't we, Dave? Uh, that's the idea. I, I mean, yeah. th- there's there's never there's never one answer to any of yeah, these business right. questions, right? So, yeah, I, yeah. Good, good point. There's, I, I was going to these... say, I like yeah. computers because there's one answer to the question, but that's not even true uh-huh. there. In fact, I've got some business therapy, if, if we have time at the end, that, that, cool. will, that will expose that. But there you go. That's great. Yeah. And both of these questions have to do with money. In a little different manner, so yeah. I'm looking forward to it. All Should right. we start? Yeah, here we go. You guys always talk about creating your own reality, but what about the reality of having to pay the bills and not having enough money? Have you ever been in a position where you could not pay the rent, make payroll, or pay other bills? How did you get through it, and what resources did you use that I, I may not know about? You know, I, yes. Terry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yes. Oh, yeah. Totally, totally have been there. And, um, you know, my, my take on the, you know, he creating your own realities, m- making your own story. This is just part of it. I, uh, I was just going to say, this is where it actually yeah. happens the most. Correct. You know where you are. You know where we are. It's the Small Business Show, episode 240, Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. I'm always reminded of that day, man. It's um, I, I, I am reminded of how much I appreciate my family on September 11th because I was supposed, Absolutely. To, I was supposed to fly home on, on that fateful 9-11 day. And uh, thankfully, I did not make it to the airport because all flights were canceled by the time I got there. But uh, good. I, good. Was, I, I was I saw stuck uh, in Austin without my family and, and oh, they were really yeah, close. Like they were an hour from the from the World Trade Center. Like that's where we lived oh, yeah. at the time. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. I saw a quote today that I really respected a lot, you know, after 18 years and said, hey, let's, you know, in honor of September 11th, let's all act like we did on September 12th. Yeah. And I, I was like, like, oh, yeah, that's really good. You know how everybody was together and yeah. this kind of thing. So I, I, yeah. I thought that was, that was pretty powerful. I like that. That's good. Yeah, Sponsors for this good. episode include go.co slash SBS and textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll go through some details about those URLs and why they're important to you in a little bit. But uh, why don't we start? Should we start with Grace's question, man? Yeah, let's do that. You know, last week we asked uh, or we talked about, hey, let's let's help some people out if they have some questions. So we got some good feedback and we're going to share a couple of those today. Absolutely. Yeah. So Grace writes, Dave and Shannon, I love the show and wanted to thank you for your weekly encouragement and motivational tips. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Have either of you ever been in a situation where an employee was in a tight spot and asked for a loan? If so, how did you handle it? If not, how did you handle turning them down? I find myself in this situation now, and I'm not sure how to proceed. I can afford to loan them the money, but I don't want it to turn into a bigger problem. Well, I, you know, like that you are identifying all the right things. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember the first time one of my employees came to me and said, I need a, essentially a loan. I mean, it was it was pitched as, hey, can you give me an advance on next month's you know thing? And I made a, a critical error at that point that stuck with me for probably five years before I sort of backtracked on it. Um, and the critical error I made was. I mean, I was, you know, relatively young business owner. I had, it was the first time that I was in a, in a business like this. It was the first time that I was the sort of the, the senior partner of a business. I, I had been like junior partner in different businesses, but when this guy came to me for the loan, I said, uh, he started explaining why. And I stopped him and I said, Hey, look, I, I yes. The answer is yes. Here's the, the details of the loan. I don't need to know anymore. You know, and the and it was fine. But five years later, he said to me, he's like, I know you don't like like to know about what's going on on in my personal life, but I need to tell you. And it was like, whoa, I really did say that like that. That is exactly the message I communicated that I don't want to know what's going on in your personal life. And at the time, I thought I didn't. Obviously, that that was in retrospect. Of course, that was wrong. I I do need to much broader comment. 
taken in a much broader broader context yes. than you may, than you maybe meant, right? No, I I I mean I meant it specifically, but I I also would have agreed with it in that broader context at the time. Like I I definitely believed like no, you know what? You're you just work for me. I it doesn't matter to me what happens at your house as long as you can show up and do the job. I don't care about the rest. And of course, I mean, like I said, I've since learned, whoa, no, you sort of need to know your employees. I mean, it's a good thing because they're human beings and like it, it allows you to form a better bond with them. And that helps with loyalty and all of that good stuff. But um, but just from a business standpoint, you got to know, like if somebody, you know, if somebody is is uh going to have something going on in their life where they're going to need some time off or whatever like like you need to know what's going on with people are they having some yeah. health issue that's going to you know maybe not be massively disruptive but minorly you disruptive know, right. like it, it's good to know it's it's okay yeah. to talk about those things and i had very much made it not okay to talk about those things so um and it took me five years before somebody, you know, offhandedly said, you know, I know you don't like this. It's like, whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah, I screwed that up. OK, not what I'm not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> In retrospect, it's, I, yes, I, yes. I, I, that was a mistake is really what it was. Yeah. It was what yeah. I meant, but it was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think to your point, like you mentioned, Dave, Grace, you're asking all the right questions. You know, number one, do you want to do it? And if, and if you don't want to, you, there's repercussions about that as well. I, I've been in this situation a number of times and I've, I've, you know, loaned employees uh, money over time. I think that, um, I, I think what you have to do is just like anything else is you got to be really clear in how it's going to work. Right. Uh, if somebody, let's say you're going to loan somebody 500 bucks, you know, how are they going to pay it back? Are you taking it out of their check on this certain uh, payback rate or whatever it is? This is not like loaning a friend money that where I always say, hey, if you're going to loan somebody money, you know, you better be willing just to give it to them. Right. Right. Because if they're your friend or family member, it's not really a loan because it could never come back and it you might, don't want to have that. And, and yeah, are you going to sacrifice the yeah, friendship yes. or the relationship over Correct. getting paid back. Oh yeah, no, do you have to Yeah, I always think of loans to friends as I'm giving you this money and someday in the future you may choose to give me money. But, you know, yeah. and and the two might even be related, but I am I cannot expect to get this back. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, with, exactly. But with an employee it's different, right? Yep. Because totally. you need to show it needs to happen all the time. You know, happen very clearly how it's going to come back into the 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 company. Cuz really it's I mean unless you're giving them a personal loan, which I would uh, I would suggest against that. I would say the company should loan them the money if it's in a position to do so. Yes. And I think it should come out of their check. And there should be a really clear payback schedule. And I also think um, it, it depends on the individual. If this is the fifth time this year that this person has asked you for an advance, there's more going on here than I just need a one time. My car broke down and I need, you know, 500 bucks to get it fixed or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I think you need to look at it like that. But, you know, I think if, if you write it out to have the details uh you, to like you said Dave you don't really need to know what's going on but um usually people say hey my car broke down or hey i have to do this that's fine but you, it's got to be basically written up so they know what to expect and then you kind of have to monitor it and see if it's happening over and over again but uh you know as as a business owner i think it's something that's nice to do for your people when they find themselves in a in a pinch you know yeah Absolutely. I think, I think it's good. And, and I think you're, like I said, Grace, you're asking all the right questions. So you're prepared that, Hey, this could be problematic and I want to be sure that it's not. And and you can have that discussion. And I would encourage you to have that discussion with the person you're loaning the money to. Very say, frankly. I don't want, yeah. Yeah. I don't want this to turn into an issue. Uh, I've written up this uh, payback schedule and here's this contract that the one thing that I have found in the past, having a problem with this is I just can't help but start to think like, well, what are these guys spending their money on? <laughs> you know, and it, I don't know if it's, uh, but like if I see, if I, you know, somebody loans somebody money, whatever, and then they show up to work with a new car or they go on a nice vacation and they haven't gotten everything paid back. I start to think, wow, you know, was that the right thing to do? Am I, okay. am I funding that? I mean, the answer yeah. is yes. It, yeah. The answer is yes. Right. It yeah. might be taken advantage of. Yeah. Um, what happens if they quit? 
You know, mm-hmm. I think you should put that in, in your, your written, your agreement is that, you know, if you're terminated or, cause I've had it before where, Oh, we, we can't let them go because they still owe, you know, a thousand dollars and they need another whatever month to pay it off. Well, that's a nightmare, right? Yeah. So you have to be able to collect, uh, in full upon termination or if they quit. And that's, I think a very important thing to put in your, uh, in your whatever agreement that you work out. And I think you have to use the agreement, the same agreement with every employee. Oh, because I absolutely. Think it, you, you don't, oh, you don't yeah. want to go down that route. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, I think it's important. Yeah. yeah. I found two links here and I, I have not vetted either one of these. So I, you know, no promises folks, but um, there, the first is a, a, just a generic loan agreement from rocket lawyer, which, uh, you know, is a good place to go. And I mean, you can search the Internet and find boilerplate loan agreements. Right. But but here's one. And then um, it, it, because that way, at least you're starting with something that's got some basis in in reality and, and has been yeah, vetted a good. little bit. Uh, and then I found this other one at SHRM.org. And I'm not even sure who that is. But anyway, uh, they have a pay advances policy. And, oh, I and like that. yeah, and it, you know, I mean, again, you know, please don't take this stuff as just gospel and, and ship it off to your employees tomorrow. But, you know, there's there's some good things in here. Like, you know, this particular pay advances policy is pretty strict. It's you know, it starts with the company discourages any advancement of pay not yet earned and exceptions will require extraordinary situations. And then they even have like an eligibility thing. Employees will be limited to two pay advances per year. Oh, yeah. See, I like that. Right. Like, I like that part. Things yeah. I would never have thought of. And, yeah. And yeah. That's, sort that's of the, cool. This is actually why you often uh, want to have an attorney uh, for your company right. just in general, because they it, it, you're not just paying them because they know how to dot the I's and cross the T's legally. You're paying them because they've been through it before and they've they they know a few things. And, and yep. but but Google can be your friend. And I you know, I'm I'm no stranger to using, you know, I'll go I'll go search out six loan agreements and read through them all and be like, OK, I'm taking now I got a picture. Ah, never thought about this before. So so I would definitely yeah. I, and I agree with you. Come up with that agreement. Sleep yep. on it. Then present it to your employee because that is the agreement you'll be using with the next one. Yep. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to get in a position. And I, I do like uh, the concept of making it part of your uh, employee manual, if you will. Yeah. Because uh, then it just it's just really transparent. It's out there. Um, I, I guess the you could think, well, am, I, that, am I encouraging them to borrow? That's <laughs> the thing is you might want to leave that out of the manual. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> because because if it's in there, you may yeah. actually be obligated at some. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Right? But, maybe. But that's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I think you'd leave it out. But then, you know, just have it in a drawer or a virtual drawer and be like, yeah, yeah. here's our policy. Here's how we do that. Yeah. We have chosen to grant you a loan, right? That needs to be the beginning of it. And and yeah. then you can sort of go from there. But it, it you 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 need to make it your explicit policy and also just your your form uh, that this is not something that's guaranteed. Right. That this is. Yeah, that's correct. This is at our discretion. We may choose at certain times to grant uh, loans to employees who ask for them. Right. And yeah, yeah. it's a, it's tricky because um, I get, I'm famous for, um, uh, you know, doing things and, and thinking that everything's going to be cool. And then not getting blindsided with like, what? I didn't mean that. Or, yeah. you know, how someone took this the wrong way, kind of like your, Hey, I don't, I'm not interested in your personal you know, yeah. stuff type of comment. Um, so, I, I think you ought to have maybe, you know, two people are going to look at it or something. Uh, you don't want to, I I'm reminded of, we used to have interns, uh, at tech restore for years and years. And at the end of each internship, they would work like 120 hours and this was unpaid and they was there to learn and this kind of thing. We taught them and, and, uh, everybody did great. They loved it. It was a real win-win situation. And when people were great, we gave them a reward, right? We sure. gave them some cash, a few hundred bucks, give them an, uh, whatever, an iPad or, you know, this kind of, whatever we had laying around, this kind of thing. Hey, you know, here, thanks for that. And we had one person that didn't do that great of a job and we yeah. didn't give them anything. 
Right. And I guess word had gotten out on the campus of this technical uh, school that we were getting interns from that you would get rewarded at the end. And this guy wrote, he just raised a huge stink. And we were told in no uncertain terms by the school, you can't give him anything. Wow. Yeah, no more, nothing. No more. And I thought, gosh, you know, what a drag. <laughs> you're, you're people that do really well. They get, you know, you get screwed, right? Because, uh, that, you know, because of one person that didn't do a good job and was upset that they didn't get treated <laughs> the same way. So I, I want to, that's my cautionary tale. And I, I just, you know, you don't want to be in that position because you loan someone some money. They're going to talk about it. And then someone else is going to come and ask you for money. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm just not comfortable. Yeah. You're not, you're not that same employee. We're not sure how long you're going to work here. Um, so be prepared that there are some nuances to this, that perhaps having two people and you could put that even on the thing, you know, we have a, a I hate the word committee, but we have a, a team that reviews these and we decide together whether or not to, to the company can to grant. And, them. And it, yeah. And it just yeah. may be a certain time. Your, your cash flow may be such that you're like, Hey, you know what? Uh, we just can't afford, we can't, we can't, we can't afford do it right now. now. Yeah. To give you a thousand bucks. Try again in 90 days. I mean, so uh, you want to just document that stuff so you protect yourself, Grace. And if any of those kind of questions come up, uh, people think weird things that you didn't mean. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's always it's always interesting. So um, but I think it's great that you're thinking about it. And I think it's awesome. I love that generosity. I think it's a, a wonderful thing to implement. You just got to protect yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Speaking of protecting yourself, you want to make sure you have the right domain name for your business. That, in fact, that's one of the most important domain or decisions that you make <laughs> is your domain yes. name. And that's why our first sponsor, Go.co, is vital. So often you come up with a great name for your business and you go and the domain is taken. You're like, crap, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to do what Shannon and I did. You're going to go to go.co slash SBS and go get your dot co domain, just like we did with business show dot co. It's short, only two characters, super easy to remember. You already know that there's more than two million domains already registered. So people are used to this. You already know that. But there's only two million domains registered, which means there's a better chance of getting the exact domain name you want compared to dot com just like we were able to. Plus, Go.co offers some startup goodies. They have all kinds of little freebies and perks and resources. I've used this. I've, I've gotten a couple of domains with it with, uh, since they became a sponsor because it, it's fantastic. It's so easy. And we have a deal. You can register your .co domain for just five bucks. Just five bucks. Plus, you get three months of their website builder and hosting services for free. To get that special offer, to register your do .co domain for just five bucks, go to go.co slash SBS. Don't wait. Go to go.co slash SBS. And our thanks to go.co for sponsoring this episode. Text Expander, man, is something awesome. that I really, I can't and don't want to live without. And thank goodness I live in a world where I do not have to, because what text expander lets me do is be really efficient and accurate, which oftentimes are at odds with each other, right? When you're a productivity True. maniac, you either can be, you can either get it done really quickly or you can get it done really accurately. Well, text expander lets you do both because you craft your snippets, your text snippets, the email replies, even the, the little things that like when somebody wants my address, I just have that there. Boom. Even my email addresses I have in Text Expander. I don't like to type out Dave at businessshow.co or feedback at businessshow.co, right? I just want to type out like I type, uh, you know, F S B S and boom, that's feedback at businessshow.co. I don't have to worry about putting an extra S in the middle because sometimes I do that. And then people can't email me and like th that kind of stinks. Text Expander makes sure that I can be fast and accurate. I do not have to proofread anything that Text Expander pops into my uh, email or wherever I'm using it. And that's the cool part is wherever you can type, you can use Text Expander. It just pops right in there. So web forms, no problem. I don't have to think about it. It's great. And it's accurate. 
It's awesome. So you can do this too, and you can share it with your team. Go check it out. Learn all about it. There's a great video on the website at textexpander.com slash podcast. Go there, check it out, and our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. All right. That's hey, great. Before we go to Terry's question, we got a sure. review, man. Uh, oh, and I nice. to share it. Yeah, Martin OFD from the UK went to businessshow.co slash reviews and left us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, the title of it is What a Show. I have been listening since the start of this podcast. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Both hosts have years of experience running many successful small businesses. Uh, I have found that they have a wealth of knowledge expressed in a very entertaining way. The only correction I would make is, is that both hosts have years of running many small businesses including lots of failures, but, but I think that True. actually helps. <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> so helps a lot. The successes are, you're not wrong. There's, there's some successes in there, but yeah, you know, you, you gotta have the failures. So yeah, it's good. No, that's great. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So let me, uh, let me read this question. This question really hit home uh, to me because lately I've been on this kick. I know you've, you know, everybody's heard it. I've talked about creating your own reality, writing your own story and it's great. And it's, and it's a, it, it comes from a, a real place of authenticity for me, but you know, Terry, uh, he writes in and says, you guys always talk about creating your own reality, but what about the reality of having to pay the bills and not having enough money? Have you ever been in a position where you could not pay the rent, make payroll or pay other bills? How did you get through it? And what resources did you use that I, I may not know about? You know, I, Yes, Terry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Totally, totally have been there. And, um, you know, my, my take on the, you know, hey, creating your own realities, m making your own story. This is just part of it. I, uh, I was just going to say, this is where it actually yeah. happens the most. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and I'll tell you a, a quick story. When I was a, a, you know, much younger businessman and I was trying to get going and nobody wanted to, you know, give me any money. And, you know, I was an unknown commodity. Right. And I met a, a, a person who I later knew, you know, wound up knowing for years and, and started a company with him. But uh, I was kind of following the auction circuit around the country, buying up technology stuff to, to resale. And, but I always ran out of money, didn't have enough money. And I met this guy, uh, his name was Jay and I was at a sale in Texas and we went out, you know, get a drink or something afterwards. And he says, and I was lamenting the fact that I was always running out of money and I, you know, I couldn't pay the bills and I was always stretched. And this guy pulled out a stack of credit cards. Uh, and, and this was, you know, 20 years ago and maybe 25 and, you know, it was probably two or three inches thick. And he said, Hey, here's, you know, $500,000. And, you know, feel free to use it if you need it, but you should also get this. So you have that $500,000 available to you. Uh, not to mention all the other benefits that we've talked about on the show about, uh, you know, frequent flyer miles and affinity points, this kind of thing, just access to the capital. And I really took that to heart. And when I came back, one, one of the, and this is one of the things I'm going to tell you is you really should have a, a good depth of, uh, access to credit, whether it's your credit cards, whether you have a line of credit on, if you own a home, having a, a HELOC, a home equity line of credit is always a smart thing in, you know, and get it when you don't need it. I was just going to say, that's the key. Yeah. When you need it, they will not Forget talk it. to you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So you, you want to get it, I think for two reasons. Um, one for, you know, when you can't pay the bills, can't pay the rent, you can borrow from it, pay it back. Um, and the, the other thing is, is when you have opportunities, because things will happen over time and somebody say, boy, you know, we, in my case, it was, oh, we want to dump this product. And uh, if somebody could take it all, we'd really cut the price or, you know, this kind of thing. So those opportunities, uh, when you have access to that capital, if you haven't accumulated the cash, the HELOC is great or, uh, you know, those credit cards. I mean, I, we used those credit cards like you, I mean, we, we burned the plastic up on those things. The key is is having the cash flow to make the payments, right? That that's a different discussion. If you don't want to use those cards if you don't uh if you're not going to have the cash flow to make those payments and hopefully not pay any interest, right? Right. That's if right. your business is struggling for other reasons, you know, your market isn't good or maybe, you know, the concept or your product whatever it is, 
you have to be able to look at that and go, wow, okay, if I go borrow this money, how am I going to pay it back? What's happening? Do I have, you know, in our case, we would have purchase orders and open invoices that hadn't been paid yet. And so you knew that, okay, well, I've got, what are my receivables? You know, I've got um, whatever, $100,000 in receivables. I can go, you know, borrow hundred grand because I know I've got that cash coming in um, or whatever percentage of that. So you want to look at that very carefully. Um, other ways I have used, uh, you know, PayPal has a really interesting product um, where they will give you a small business loan with like, I mean, instantly just based on your history with them. That's why one of the things I like to oh. to use PayPal, in addition to a regular merchant processor, PayPal's really creative. And so if you've used them over the years, um, and it's never too late to start, as as at least one option when people pay, you'll build up some history and you'll you'll eventually start to get these uh, offers and they'll say, okay, hey, uh, we'll loan you $20,000. Uh, here's what it costs. They don't charge you interest or they don't call it interest, uh, but they, char- they charge you a fee. And it may be, you know, you may consider it high. I mean, to borrow 20 grand, you may cost you uh, 500 bucks. I don't know. Um, and... Uh, but they'll just take it from your PayPal as your money comes in, you know, you're going to pay it back uh, as you receive payments. And that's how they kind of calculate, okay, well, based on the payments we've received, we will loan you X. Um, and, and it's great. And and, I, and I've used it. And uh, if you use Amazon payments, which I know is a little more obscure, they do that. They do a similar thing too. Huh? If you, you know, so it's, and and I think I'm those are good things. Stripe, I, I, we wind up using Stripe more than yeah. PayPal. And so I looked and Stripe has their, uh, they call it their Stripe funding circle, but it seems to be exactly this. And they're like, look, you can apply with Stripe. We will pre-fill information. So they're obviously using your, you know, your history with them is part of that. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I think another good one is, is cabbage K A B B A G E. Uh, you know, they're going to base the loan off of your credit history and this kind of stuff, but there's, you know, access, they do up to a quarter million dollars. Um, yeah. again, if, if you think you're going to need to borrow them, borrow money, you should do it before you need it. If you have that luxury, right? Sometimes you don't. Yeah, well, like you said, get the you know. HELOC in place, get, yeah. you know, get a, go to your bank and get, just get a line of credit. Uh, yeah. Get a line of credit. If they won't give you one on your business, the HELOC is great. Uh, people always look, I, I talk to people like, wow, you know, you put that at risk. I was like, well, yeah, I mean that that's you're in business. It is risk. And maybe uh, you just do a small HELOC, you know, my, our first line of credit, you know, that I got was like $50,000, you know, yeah. and then slowly over time, you, you know, you build it up, but, but you've kind of diversified these things. Maybe you've got a couple hundred thousand dollars in credit card, uh, yep. you know, financing that you could use in a pinch. Um, and definitely, I mean, I've, I've made use of all of these things and yeah. I, I treat, I mean, I like to have one, especially when you do start to get into those cash pinches, right? I, there is one, that I it, and it doesn't matter which one it is. You know, I've got credit cards and I've got a uh, I've got a HELOC, of course. And then I've got a, a you know, a, a, actually two lines of credit with two different banks with the with the business just to kind sure. of diversify a little bit. Yeah, that's what, smart. The HELOC at this point is really the emergency, right? Like I can yeah. take these lines of credit because I've been able to establish them. But there is one line of credit that I have designated as the last resort. Now, I know I've got the HELOC past it, but. That line of credit, if I touch that, or even if I'm thinking about touching it, that means that I need to make significant and immediate changes to my cash yeah, flow picture. It's good. Yeah. You know, and I did. I ran into that. Actually, it was just about a year ago. It was like, oh, wait yeah. a minute. I'm I'm doing something wrong. Actually, it was more. It was a couple of years ago. I, how time flies. Uh, but but yeah, I ran into a, a problem a couple of years ago where we had a short term ta- cash crunch. And it was like, wait a minute. Sure. This is more than short term. Because if it was short term, I wouldn't yeah, that's be thinking about that. This has been going on longer. I, I you know, it's been a slow burn. Uh, I need to make some changes. I need like wholesale, big, immediate changes to pave, like you said, the path for the future so that I can pay it off. As it turned out, I didn't even need to tap that. But the fact that I was thinking about it was enough of, you know, that 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 I, I always set like like, you know, mental reminders like, oh, you know, I'm leaving the house. I'll put my 
keys with my jacket so I don't forget my raincoat because I know it's going to rain today or, you know, whatever that is. This is one of those things. It's like, oh, if you're thinking about that, this means other things. Go ahead and and and, you know, you, there might be some hard decisions you got to make today. And, right. and it was like, okay, yeah, all right, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, that is so, that's such good advice. And it goes back to that, you know, look at your business. Don't borrow money if, if there is no light at the end of the table. Don't go deeper in if you can avoid it. Now, you know, right. I, I've, I've, I've done this, of course, a number of times when I, I mean, I'm an eternal optimist. So I always think, okay, well, I'm going to figure it out. And, you know, nine times out of 10, I've been able to figure it out. But there are times when I haven't. And I could tell you, from having, you know, a bunch of different lines of credit, a great thing to discuss with your bank is a future plan to convert the line of credit to a term loan if you're having problems getting that line of credit paid back down. For example, if your line of credit is, you know, quarter million dollars, $250,000, uh, then you want to you're using it and everything else. And and most of those lines uh, want you to be paid down 30 days out of the year. And one of the old tricks is, you know, you get approved, they fund it and you just don't touch it for the first month. Right. That's it. Then yep. you, then you draw it down and you've got, you know, 11 months of use or whatever, if you have to, but it's really common to get out, especially if you're an inventory based business, which is what I, for the most part, I've always had uh, in one form or another you tie up a lot of that cash in your inventory. And if it comes a point where you're like, man, I'm having a hard time getting this line paid down. But if you've already had that discussion with your banker uh, and said, Hey, if we run into this issue, you know, a couple of years down the line or whatever, uh, instead of, or maybe when we go to renewal, maybe, you know, we should plan on uh, converting that into a term loan, easy to make a, you know, standard monthly payment over maybe five years and you get that paid off. Banks love that because they want to expand their relationship with you. Right. Yeah. They, they want to get their, uh, you know, it's not that I don't like banks, but they want to get their hooks into you deeper and uh, have a broader portfolio. So if you're already talking about, yeah, you know, when we get there and, and they'll see that you've made some payments on that credit line, but maybe you haven't been able to knock it down below 200 grand. Maybe every time you pay 50,000 off, you know, a couple weeks later, you're like, wow, I got to tap that 50. <laughs> I need that money again. And especially if your business is growing, growth is very expensive. And it used to really mess with me because I'd be like, how can we never have any money? But the business is doing so great, right? But it was the cash flow that was always getting killed. Uh, profits be damned, right? We've right. talked about that here on the show. And I have often have made the mistake of trying to just, you know, uh, prop up the business with profits when you really have to build your business up with cash, cash flow, and the profits usually will follow. So anyway, that's my uh, my take on it. And, uh, you know, great questions. Uh, anyone else has some feedback, we'd love to, uh, uh, you know, hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co. And Terry and Grace, thank you so much for uh, sending in your questions. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's freaking awesome. This, I love the interaction. It, it, yeah, me too. It makes a makes a huge difference. Um, That's great. I I have like one little. I don't even. It's just business venting. But I'll but okay. I'll share. Let's hear it. Uh, yeah. So I, you know we've been we are a technology company. We host our websites and all this and. We manage our own servers. We have, I mean, it used to be co-located servers. Now they're virtualized, but it's the same kind of thing, right? And I have a team. There's the, the facility that we have our server with. Uh, it's a company called Servant. Actually, it's now Lease Web. We migrated to some new hardware. It's been, it took forever to, for them to get the new hardware spun up. It was in the, in the acquisition of Lease Web and Ser Servant. So it took forever and it kind of got screwed up a couple of times. But what that did was it allowed us, it bought us some time where we could have two servers up and running uh, simultaneously. And I thought, wait a minute. And the initial plan was they were just going to clone us over to a new server. It's like, wait, if you don't care that we're going to have two up and running in your data center for a little while, like a few months, we're just going to migrate over slowly and and rebuild our our stuff instead of just, oh, taking, sure. you know, this five year old installation full. Actually, it's more than five full of cruft and everything. It's like, we'll we'll start with a new operating system and get the stuff over there and and that'll pave us a nice path for the future. And it was like, yeah, OK, great. They, they were totally fine with it. They, they they were like, yeah, we screwed you on this other thing too many times. Like, you're fine. Great. Awesome. Good customer service, you know, in the end. And 
now we're at the it, we're we're not at their end. We're at my end of this period, right? And so the issue is this is a one time every five year thing at at yeah, okay, most, sure, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's not something that's going to happen next month. It's not something that's going to happen next year. It may not ever even happen again. Right. Like I have who knows where the business is going to be in five years. Right. I, I, right. I, yeah. Right. It's impossible to say. I am the one that knows more about the way this is configured than anyone else. Um, uh, yes. I, I have our admins. I have a team of admins they are actually offshore. They're in in Russia. I, they are great, but they are not like they are great for me to say go do this i need to be the manager of this project and they've done a lot i would say that they probably did 60 maybe 70 percent of it but now this final 30 percent, i could train them how to do this and walk through it with them and you know sit around waiting uh to test things and figuring you know trying to figure out what they're doing and it would take me way longer than it's taking me to just do it myself but you know i like i hate that I'm I'm the one I don't mind doing it. I actually quite enjoy this kind of stuff, but it takes me away from all the other stuff. And it's you know, it's not ten dollar versus thousand dollar an hour work. But, you know, these offshore folks like I mean, I do. I mean, I think we only pay them like 30 or 40 bucks an hour. So, you, yeah. you know, like I'm doing this work that other people could do, but I would have to spend a lot of time teaching them exactly what they need to do. And then they could go do it. And I, I don't think it's worth my time. To, you know, because I'm spending my time one way or the other. It's like if I'm going to teach you and this is a non repeatable task, I, I'm just going to do it. It's fine. <laughs> so, right, I, right. I don't I, I think that's partially a character flaw for sure. It's you know, it's rooted in my impatience, but it's also rooted in my perfectionism. Like this is kind of yeah. important and I want it right. And I if it you know, and I've I've sort of litmus tested each of these. I've sort of broken the migration up into modules. And, and with some of them, it was like I would ask their opinion. How would you re recommend I do this? And when they would tell me something, it's like, OK, great. You do it. Awesome. And then there was the part where it's like actually migrating all the site files over and those sort of, sort of things. I'm like, how would you do this? And they had terrible answers. I was like, um, oh, OK, so you are not the right person to do this. OK, no problem. No, it's fine. You know, I could teach you the right way, but you don't like, no, no, I, I'm not going to. <laughs> so how about that? How about using that 80 uh, percent rule that, you know, Gary Von Meyer from uh, Tech Defenders, you know, how he, he mentioned that, which, you know, he once they can do 80% of what he's doing, he turns it over, even though that last 20%, which may be what you're talking about, yeah. can be a little yeah. painful. He, you know, brought up that concept of freeing himself to then move on to the next thing, knowing that, you know, I'm going to get 80% out of it, or they're going to be able to do 80%. Maybe that last 20%, I'm going to have to, uh, or it's not going to be quite as good, or they don't know how to do it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe try that concept. That's the concept I need for the next time. I'm too deep. In, like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm too deep in right now. This is like, yeah, we are yeah. days away. Hopefully by the next time we record together, this is now behind me. Right. So yeah. we are, we are days away. I'm it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but, but you're right. There is that. The thing is, I don't know what 80% perfect looks like with this. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, I'm sure. and I'm not sure it, like, this would have been your, this is good advice because this is why we do this. Uh, this would have been the right time to test this out because I, I, I'm, I'm not in a time crunch, right? I could have had them do this and then say, OK, no, 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 no. Fine. But part of the problem is, you know, they're not right here in my office. I'm not They're They're not you know, yeah, I don't get to hard. hear when they start grumbling about a problem that they're having. They just yeah. buckle down and try and solve it. And what might happen is, you know, I say, OK, do a dry run, migrate this stuff over, see what it looks like, but don't cut over the world yet. You know, leave the world on the old server. Let's test, see what it looks like on the new server. They might well just be like, ah, you know what? It looked like it was working fine. I cut everything over like that. That has happened before. 
Sure. Yeah. I, I think it's partially because in, in Russia, the concept of quality control is not the same as what we have uh, here. Yeah. And yeah. it's fine. I, like I've, I don't say that in a derogatory way. It's just I, that's a lesson I've learned the, the hard way uh, over the last two decades employing, you know, offshore folks over there. So it's like, sure. okay. I mean, but I'm, all, I'm only paying them 20 to 40 bucks an hour. So it's yeah, like, okay, it, it, I, I, I think that, yeah, getting that uh, those people, those folks are awesome, but getting the the business processes uh across is can very be very difficult. challenging yeah it's very if difficult. i can tell them do this compartmentalized yeah, thing it's, it's freaking yep. awesome yeah yes it is yeah. and and so i don't have anyone else that i can just say yeah. go you know go do this and and when i hear you start to grumble and when i hear the pot start to you know start to whistle i can step in and say hey what, what the, where are you what's going on yeah and, yeah tell me right. what's happening you know so there you go yeah yeah. Well, we should do a show about outsourcing and offshoring. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done one of those in a long time. No, but it's well, true. Well, we should do that. I think yeah. that's great. All right. Well, thanks. Well, this actually was really good advice. That, that it, yeah, it teaches you know. me for the next time before I just dive in. It's like, wait, is eighty percent okay on this? You know, if it is, yeah. then that's the answer. And and maybe for mission critical stuff, you can't do that. You know, maybe right. it has to be you know, higher than that. I don't know, but uh, give it not, worth worth looking at. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like it. Awesome. I like it. Well, thanks uh, for listening again, folks. Dave, thanks for hanging out this week again. Thank you. And this is talking this about is a good small one. business. Yeah. yeah, I enjoy answering these questions. We'd love for you to review the small business show if you've if you've enjoyed it. Uh, businessshow.co slash review will get you there, and it does really help. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And feedback at businessshow.co just to uh, send in all your stuff because that's what we. Uh, that, that's how that's how we were able to do the show today. So thank you so much to everybody. There were a few other questions that came in. We'll we'll we're keeping some them in the good, queue. Don't worry about it. Some good ones. Yeah. Some good ones that we're going to talk about soon. Yep. 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 All right. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for everything. Thanks, Shannon. Thank Keep you. Look at that charm life, folks. <laughs> <laughs>